Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Edit uh, Vivaldi Violin Concerto, highlighting uh, the uh, relief fund for Serenissima musicians who are out of work at least until September. Uh, one bit of good news today, we've uh, just uh, heard news that we've got um, uh, a grant from Arts Council England, uh, so, and which will enable us to continue operations at least until, until October. Um, however, um, good, as good as that piece of news is, uh, uh, we're, we're still in a, in a bit of a tricky situation. So please keep those donations coming in. Um, yesterday, what we were, we were looking at... Um, I can't remember what we were looking at yesterday. Uh, oh yes, the, um, the concerto from the Opus 6, which we gave 7.5, I think. Um, today, uh, we are looking at um, RV340, concerto in A major... Um, the work survives in an autograph manuscript um, in Dresden. It's uh, the title uh, give, that Vivaldi gave to the concerto was a concerto for Monsieur Pizendel. Pizendel being Vivaldi's virtuoso uh, Saxon pupil who uh, came to Venice to study with Vivaldi in 1716 and 1717. This concerto is legendary in um, uh, Vivaldian circles, uh, particularly if you happen to have a rather sort of schoolboy sense of humour, which, uh, which I fortunately do, um, because uh, it, uh, it's got, it's, Vivaldi's written some rather rude words in the last movement. Um, here you can see uh, he's written Perli Coglioni, which um, uh, basically, basically translated means for dicks or dickheads, if you like, uh, which yeah, makes me laugh every time. Um, interestingly, if you look at Torriano's um, 1659 edition of his uh, uh, Italian-English dictionary, um, he puts down as coglione, um, is a testicle or cod of man or any other male creature. Interestingly, there's a verb to go with it as well, which is uh, coglionare, to, which, uh, which he gives as to play with one's whim wham. There you go. Uh, I'll leave you to work out what that means. Um, so there you go. Yes, marvellous piece this is. Um, interestingly, back to sort of musicological uh, 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 things. Um, in the last movement, um, uh, there are sort of bits you can see, sort of little pencil annotations that Pizendel has been... Uh, writing on the manuscript because often he liked to heavily embellish what Vivaldi wrote. But also, if you come down here, uh, Vivaldi has written Qui si ferma piacimento, which means you can play a massive cadenza if you want. Now, if you go a bit further down the manuscript, there you go. There is a very hastily written cadenza by Vivaldi, uh, which goes, which will fit nicely there into that uh, Quisi Ferma Piacimento. The next page, this little thing here is rather interesting. This is a very tiny fragment of an aria from Vivaldi's surviving oratorio, Judita Triumphans, which was performed at the Pietà in 1716, so Pizendo would have been there. Um, uh, you can see from, from here that chorus, well, this is, I'm oh, sorry, a very, very small copy of Vivaldi's manuscript, uh, this is the bit in question. This is the, the actual manuscript from you, for UD to Triumphans. Here, there you go. Um, just sort of four bars of it. And then underneath that, you have a load of written out um, embellishments that Pizendel's been working on. Uh, this bit for the uh, corresponds to a passage in the last movement of the concerto. Um, the, uh, the quote from Udita is rather interesting because it uh, not only that, but also the the um, uh, the uh, Ritonello in the last movement uh, sounds uh, very similar to uh, a certain passage in the the aria uh, that Vivaldi gives to the vile consort in part two of Udita. So it would rather suggest that um, this concerto was written at exactly the time when uh, Vivaldi was working on Udita. Anyway, um, here's uh, the Ritonello from the uh, slow movement.
So there you go. Uh, I'll finish this. I've sort of got halfway through, uh, halfway through the last movement, uh, and then uh, we'll be back tomorrow to uh, work on a new concerto and give this one a rate. It's probably going to get a good one, I think. Anyway, enjoy it. Cheers. Bye. Hello again. Sorry, uh, Camilla's just told me off because I didn't tell you why Vivaldi had wrote, uh, written Pellicoglioni. Um, I've hinted uh, before at uh, Vivaldi's uh, reluctance to figure his bass parts uh, because he basically thinks that the bass players that he works with, the harpsichordists, the theorbo players, know exactly what to do with his bass lines. However, the Germans preferred uh, for their bass lines to be much more fully figured. And indeed, this is the bit in this concerto where the only bit where the Vivaldi figures. Interestingly, not only is he written for Dix on the top here, but he's also written the figures in massive, massive numbers. Though those numbers are huge compared to um, other uh, instances where Vivaldi figures his bass lines. I have a sneaking suspicion, um, if you play this part, if you just play it with, with, the, with the violin and the bass, you can... Uh, the, the ear picks up on uh, implied parallel fifths, which will be a no-no. My hypothesis might be something along the lines that uh, Vivaldi wrote this concerto with sort of Pizendel looking over his shoulder, and Pizendel might well have said, oh, but if you do that, it sounds, like, sounds as though you've got parallel fifths, even though you haven't. And Vivaldi went, oh, yeah, but if you, if you figure it like this... Seven six seven six seven six, then that kind of gets that then draws the ear to something else, which means you don't hear the kind of implied parallel fits. That's one possible suggestion. Anyway, there you go. We thought we'd better do that, otherwise you'd all be writing in and wondering why Vivaldi had suddenly had a fit of Tourette's in the last movie. <laughs> anyway, cheers. See you tomorrow.